We're good. We're up. Okay, good. Okay, welcome to uh, Hasidus K Tuesday night's Hasidus year. I'm Abby Kamen. And uh, we have people here with me in the house and a couple people, a few people in Zoom. And uh, apparently our Facebook Live is up as well. So as always, uh, this year, every Tuesday night is dedicated Lili Nishmat, the Nishom of Shlomo Ben Moshe Bundi, Bundi Freundlich, a friend for many, many years, and who was actually instrumental in getting this thing together. And at the beginning, we always uh, give opportunity for people to mention names, Lili Nishmat or Rafu Shlema. So I'll give any, anybody who wants to that opportunity right now. I'll take it with Yisur Leib ben Chava Rivka. We'll have another four shleimah bekorev. Four shleimah for Sarah Nafama. That's for Smolka. Did you hear that? Uh, no. One more time. You're gonna have to speak a little. For four shleimah for Sarah Nafama. That's for Smolka. Got it. Okay, moving my instrument away. Okay. Okay. Purim. Purim. When I was in Kader, the conservative show, we learned a song. And I don't, I'm going to sing it. I wonder if anyone else learned it. Purim, a holiday of gladness. With song and dance, we give an end to sadness. Purim has come, Purim has come. We thank the Lord above for the miracle which he performed. He has our faith and love. That's the song. I was about seven, eight years old. And you see, things stay with you. Uh, which is kind of the theme here. That says things that are very deep. Things that can get uh, stuck or lodged in levels of your so-called, what we call formerly consciousness. Zecher, uh, right? We just came from uh, Parsha Zecher. So uh, we all have memories that are deep. And these memories uh, transcend time sometimes, transcend logic, and who knows why we remember this and when we, why we remember that. And that's actually one of the themes of Purim. So let's start. Now we in Purim Baklau. This is a mimer, this is one ois in a mimer from Megillus Esther, uh, about 10, 12, uh, maybe eight or 10 in the mimorum of, of, on Megillus Esther in the back of Torah Or, the you know, Maimorim and Tesephus. And this is one from the, uh, on the Hesephus. So this is the, what is the Indian of Purim? In a time Shenikra Purim, the reason that it's called Purim is Al Shem HaPur. Everybody knows what the Pur is? Yeah, the Pur. He says right there. <laughs> the HaPur and Agairo. Everybody knows what a Agairo is? Agairo is a lottery. A lottery, exactly. So right away, it introduces the idea of something that's not subject to rational, the realm of rationality. Uh, in common talk, we call it chance. But since nothing is by chance, it's subject to a higher level, a level that where the reason and the logic are not revealed. So that's, so the whole theme, we might say, is Adalei Yadam. Because the whole theme of Purim is based not on Yadiyah, but Lamai Lamiha Yadiyah, higher than Yadiyah. Meaning is this. The fish on the Rayam, we see She call Hayomim Shahoya Bene Israel the Sakana. All the days that the Jewish people in the time of Persia were in danger because of Gezeras Homan, because of the decree of Homan. Shinim Shah Hazman Kemaat Meshak Shona, which that time was drawn out a little bit less than a year. Hayakulum Ibhinis Mesiris Nefish Mamish. What was the Jewish attitude? What did we do? In the face of that, in the face of that, we were totally moister nefesh, giving it, giving ourselves over, giving ourselves over to das, to the, uh, to, the, the to the religion, to the religion of, uh, of that we have inherited. Behold yomi, behold esu, behold shah. We were in a state of mysterious nefesh. Now mysterious nefesh also harkens to the Indian of Adela Yoga, because mysterious nefesh is. The beginning of, or not, maybe not the beginning, but the you know, fundamental uh, moment, the, the, the pivotal moment when we were Messiris Nefesh, when it was when we said Nasib and Nishma by Makabal the Torah. 
We had no idea. We didn't, it wasn't something we had thought through. And we said, we're just going to do it. So Mesiris Nefesh, again, giving yourself over to something which is not to something, to a level of behavior, which is out of the realm of rationality. So that's what, that's what stood in our merit for the whole year that we were uh, under the decree of Haman. In every moment we were prepared to give ourselves over the hariga, even to the point of being killed. And not to transgress the Torah. That's what Chazal tell us about this state. And not one person had what's called the Mashabas Chutz, any notion that they should bow down to Homin. The Zeho Inyan, and this topic, and this idea was certainly, certainly much higher than Tambadas. Jonathan, just ask you, please leave the door ajar. So I, no, it springs by itself. It springs by itself. Just leave it ajar so other people can come in. So this is the uh, the notion of Lamai Lamatam Vadas introduced by the idea that we were Mesiris Nefesh. In the Ikid Indian Mesiris Nefesh, what's the main Indian of Mesiris Nefesh? For the Varakisha Eina Oila Alpi Hatam Vadas. Mesiris Nefesh, giving over oneself, is specifically when it's something that's not subject to reason. Umashikosa Besifra Hayira. Sifar Yira literally means books of fear, which is Musa's word, books of Musa, which predominantly are here to strike fear in the heart. Mr. Jonathan, feel free to take your coat off and relax. You can put your coat over there. The Ava, love, Alpitan Vadas, love, when you love someone according to reason, Nikra, okay, it's how to do it. It's, 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 uh, the Ava Alpi Tam and the Tam Besechel, Nikra Meshira Zephyr, the end of the Ava Be Meshira Snefesh. A love which is according to Tam Besechel, this is not called Meshira Snefesh. It's not called Meshira Snefesh because you have, when you love something according to Sechel, what it means to love something according to Sechel is you love something because it's good for me. You love something, I get a good feeling. There's always something there. Meshira Snefesh, love or fear of Hashem, which is not for, about me. But really about him, about this is this is what's called the avoidus evid, the, uh, the servant, the the uh, the, ser the service of a servant, where the love or the fear is all about God and nothing about me. So he in the town with So it's not something that's in the limits of my understanding. So you see, right? Even though we haven't mentioned at all, and we will soon, the theme of Adulay Yoga, the whole topic, the, the way the Alter Rebbe introduces it, is that Purim itself, since number one, its name comes from the lottery, the poor, which is not subject to reason, and the fact that our behavior during that time when the decree of Haman was upon us, we behaved in a way totally opposite to what Haman wanted for us, from us, and that was not according to reason at all. Now he brings an example of a very fine kind of, you might think it's Mesir Snefesh, but it may not be. A person who gives himself over to Kedusha Shashem, to the holiness of Hashem, the poil mamish in actuality. If it's his purpose is to grasp something, to have something of an experience, for instance, he wants to receive a reward. That's why he's giving it all. What were the two who gave, uh, who were, or the, of the three who went in the garden, they went up to the, the, uh, the, the, garden, the orchard and they went, one went mad, one went crazy, one totally denied, uh, became a, a apostate. They were searching after ecstasy. They were searching after something. And that searching after something, no matter how, self-sacrificing it may seem is truthfully the opposite of self-sacrifice. It's self-indulgent. Mm -hmm. 
So that they look like Nasiris, and if you want them, we have a nice wine here also if you want to make a boy for your dog. Okay. So the, the garden, what was the garden? The garden was the sense of purity and pleasure instead of saying the rules of Hashem? The garden, the garden was the, the garden of, of, of the secrets of Hashem. The garden is the, is, you know, the, uh, the, uh, so Moshe, Moshe Kodavera, okay. right? So safer in Kabbalah called the Pardus. The Pardus. Which is the orchard. Orchard. And we learn from this, or we're taught about this, the Pardus is a, uh, each letter of the word Pardus stands for something. Shat. Rosh, Ramesh, and so Beautiful. It's the four levels of the Torah. So to go into the orchard really means to bring one's consciousness into the deepest through all the levels, and there's no skipping levels, right? So what, what, you, can't, you, you can't get to the sod without going through the Peshat. What was your objective that the, that the, three, the three results happened? Well, he said three of them. One of one, Rabbi Akiva's objective, he's the one who only, the only one who came out sane, was to just Shemaim. to just because it's Lashem Shema. And, yes. and the other three had what's the word? Uh, secondary ulterior motives. Se ulterior motives. Ulterior Thank motives. you very much. Right. It wasn't the quadrant to know the knowledge of Hashem. Exactly. For other reasons, exactly. self aggrandizement for other reasons. Right. Mitch is curious. You're hearing. You're picking up the conversations. Yes, loud and clear. Good, good, good. Yeah. So it may look like Mesir Snefish, okay. right? Amen. But not necessarily. It could be to receive a reward, to have the experience. Bukiyetsi, or anything like this. We're four lines up from the bottom. This is not true, Mesiris Nefesh. Because it could be, I mean, you're, you could be giving yourself over 150%, denying everything, not pay attention to anything except your service of Hashem in order to yarvech. To suck in like like deep thirst in this a great great it's interesting a great great rebach a great prophet spiritual prophet and that's what it says to receive a reward. But is that that Marshall? This is by way of example. Adam a person gives over himself. He'll do anything. We know there are people in the world, right? Who they will be totally, quote, self-sacrificing to amass riches. They don't sleep. They don't eat. The whole point is to amass riches. But that's not Masira Snefers. It's really all about you. To, to, to gather behind the Rab, a great, a great splendor if you're a uh, treasure. Or a person wants rulership, power. Here's another one, right? A person is self-sacrificing, will do anything in order to amass power. Okay, I'd say. Or anything like this. Even though the person is giving him or herself over totally. This is not at all comparable to true Masiris Nefesh. Very interesting they use the Lashon of the MS on the one hand, and then Amiti. The, well, 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 think <laughs> about that. Amiti, Amiti is true. Right. Uh, uh, Amiti and MS. MS is. Well, no, it just means Amiti. I mean, it, it uses an adjective here. Instead of MS a noun, Amiti is, is a, something true. But I, so tell, true explain, what, explain what you're pointing what, out. What, what I'm pointing out is that on, I guess what he's saying is that externally, right, there's a lot of MS to, you can see it, his. his uh, or her, Monsieur Nefesh, but internally there's not really a, a reason, there's not a, a, a true um, Monsieur Nefesh totally for the right purpose. So, well, MAT is the expression versus MS, and which, which, which category? It's an, it's an answer. Monsieur Nefesh. No, I understand that, but I'm asking you to categorize it. You're giving an explanation as to one is not real and one is real. So, which one, which adjective? One is saying is MS is in the Kakash line, provided MAT is in. How do you so Amiti is, is the is the latter where where it's at least from this lashon yeah. that yeah. that's purely it's for Amiti. Yeah, I mean Amiti. Amiti. Yeah. And why, how do you kind of distinguish that from MS? By the instance? in this context, we're saying that that MS, that MS here is is an, is an external expression. That's what I want to find out. That's, that's why there you go. That's why the syntax yeah. you said Amiti means something. Amiti something. That's why I wanted the context. That's why I asked. That's right. That's why I, uh, uh, anyway, that's correct. You know, because I think I counted the thing I should make. 
you know, when, 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 we, when we say Hashem, unless, you know, after the Shema. Right. right? But, but that's, that's why that. Again, there's a different context. So that's right. No, I'm true. You're, that's why I asked. Right. No, that's, that's, that's why I asked. That's why. Thank you. So even though the person is from, from an external observer, look at the self sacrifice that this person has that he's going through in order to. But the in, order, is, in order to become wealthy. Substantive. Ah, but he's doing it to become wealthy. So it's ultimately self-serving. So, so it's not a meeting. So the ultimate teleological goal that underlines is that so you're going to the substance rather than the effort that makes sense. Yeah, you go to the substance of it. What is it about? Is it and, and I've, I've, I've substance can be easily explained. Is it for you or is it for God? Even though they may even look, even being, though they may look the same. I used to use that problem. Even when it's for you, you want to go close to Hashem, it gives you some satisfaction of being close to your Creator, to your omnipresent, right? So that's a different type of. So of, that's of, not. That's not exactly purely material gain. That's, that's the point. point. That's, that's, the that's the point. The angel of Rakhle Hagiel lechafetz Yaiser Yakaru Ekufavet. That what you just said, Jonathan, is just you want to get more of something, more glory, more covet, richer. Yinkem he 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 shikavar hoya meshuka gretzonoiso tiboyim. So this means that you're actually hey look who's here from upstate or almost upstate. Hi, Hi welcome, welcome. Hi Leora. Hi Leora. Hi Leora. You just said a new name today. Leora, nice to meet you. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Ah, yes, yes, yes. yes. And you're you're. I'm Elisha. Elisha, nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you both on the of the world. Thank you. Help yourself out. Uh, make yourself at home, huh? Oh, no. You left it <laughs> No, you put it right there. I, I guess that happens to me, too. I lost the bag last time. You know, my car's Have there. something if you want. Take something. <laughs> Have a little wine if you oh, want. Oh, we're doing the last episode. We finished it again last week. We finished the Rebbe's... Uh, yeah, we finished oh, the Sefer. Okay. We finished the whole... Oh, you know. We're doing poor. Okay. Cool. We're doing poor. Okay, uh, Lenora, Lenora, Leora, Leora, Leora. Do you read Hebrew? I do. I don't understand. Okay, good. Well, we're translating everything into English. Okay. We're on the top of the flip over the page. We're on the top of the. Yeah, you can do that. Huh? We're on top of the page. Kuf, kuf, ah. So, uh, Ari or anybody want to yeah. summarize for the people who just came in? No. No, we can make a I'm sorry. <laughs> Summarize. <laughs> I'm trying to help whatever. No, I was going to give her some water. Lord, you want water or, or wine? But if you're offering wine, I'm just... Take, take. Because it's an opportunity to make a great Sure. It's, uh, it's on the theme. Wow. The theme The theme of this evening, I guess you didn't read it, is Adela Yada. Adela Yada means, it's a, you know, I didn't say this, so I guess it's worth saying. Where does the expression come from? What does it mean? It's from the Gomorrah. There's a, there's a Gomorrah, there's a Talmud, whole Masechda, called Megillah. And in the Megillah, in the Talmud Megillah, there are oh, discussions about what went on then that's not in the Megillah that we read, you know, more of a historical account, and also a halachic, a legalistic account. And one of the legalistic uh, expressions, meaning that's something that you're obligated to do, the Talmud talks about the mitzvahs of Purim. You know the mitzvahs of Purim? Who knows the mitzvahs? Two shlachmanas and metamase of anim and to listen to the Megillah twice. Good. So we have those. Okay. But one of them, that the two sudas, there's a specific mitzvah that a person is obligated. Chayab Odom, a person is obligated. Lehishtakir. Oh, so you can't tell the difference between Mordechai and Haman. So the Ishtak here is actually Rashi's word. The word is the Basumi Puriya. Hayab Adam the Basumi Puriya. A person is obligated to the, uh, the, the Basumi. I'm going to leave it hanging because Rashi explains what says what it is. It means to drink. It means to drink. On Purim, Adela Yaga, until the person doesn't know the difference between Barak Mordechai and Barak Haman. Cursed, blessed is Mordechai and cursed is Haman. And so we're exploring tonight. What, what does that mean? So, anybody want to summarize where we've gone so far? I'm looking at you. Uh, I have to apologize. I don't. Or Ari or Jonathan. I arrived a little bit late. Ari, what you wanna? You wanna tell us? We're talking about objectives, right? We're talking about the parties, which the rabbi mentioned is the, or, or, the orchard. 
who is talking about really needs to do something to know Hashem by analogy for the objective of knowing Hashem to commune to bring closer to your creator and the omnipresent versus sacrificing all or purian or self-serving objectives. So we went into the nuances of, well, isn't my knowing Hashem or going closer and giving that satisfaction a self-serving objective? No, knowing Hashem is a different type of objective than sacrificing yourself for pure and material gain. I can be obsessed with making money, Rabbi Gilead, for example, right? And I'll do everything to make money. I'll stay up hours a day, I'll do this for my family, but I sacrifice you. No, that's self aggrandizing substitute, pure and material gain. So we said, what kind of a reward is reward in Hashem is a different type of physical reward is on the material, the homeos of the objective, and the other is a different. Type. And I think if you kind of see that some people study toward to become great in the eyes of their fellows. I have yukra, I have status, I have kabod, I know it. That's Rabbi is distinguishing that from having love of Hashem and studying Torah for the sake of Okay, one more step. Uh, that even the, the thirst and love and yearning for spiritual experience can be self-centered. Meaning it's it's all about me. It's what I want, right? I want to be closer to God. I want to have some feeling of I'm yearning for that. And that's and by the way, that's we've learned in other places, that's a a very important thing to do. It's legitimate. To yeah. it's, it's totally legitimate that's to that's yearn legitimate. to yearn for Hashem, yes. right? Yes. But the question is, what are you are you yearning for it so that you could get high, so to speak? And we'll, we'll use that just as a metaphor for I want to have that kind of experience, or are you doing it and yearning because I want to fulfill what He wants for me? Well, interesting, interesting. And it's a so very it's a big, to know Hashem, very big difference. In mitzvah to shmai to know Hashem. On the other hand, if you love Hashem, like King David wrote in Psalms, and King Eman wants to quote, quote, you're saying, that's, is that the same? So that, that begs another question. I want to keep the mitzvahs because Hashem commanded me to. But what happens if Hashem commanded me to? And I want to get close to Hashem. Okay, fine. So let's, let's deal with that. Uh, so I could deal with one sentence from uh, Sefer Yosira. One sentence from him. He says, Im rots libach, If your heart runs Oops. out, I want to come close. Hearts running out. Shuv la'echad. Return to the one. What does it mean, return to the one? Do you really want to be close to God? Yeah? Really? Or maybe you just want to have a, a good time. I mean, you can do exercises, you can do breathing, you can do lots of things, and you can do hallucinogenics, you can do a lot of things in order to, and even without any substance, you could put yourself in states, which, and learn how to put yourself in states. There are a whole regimes, not regimes, that's not the right word. Yeah, regimes, uh, ways, doctrines and paths that you can learn to put yourself in a state of some kind of, let's call it ecstasy for lack of a better word, let me finish, right? Okay, and if you don't yearn for that, you're not gonna be motivated to, come to work, do the work to what we call in our classes, thin out the physical, the, the phys thin out the clippers and develop eyes to see godliness if you don't yearn for it. So you have to yearn for it. Okay, that, but that, hold on. So im rots liba, if your heart runs out, and the meaning of it, your heart should run out, you should have that kind, and you should learn how to get close to God like that, and to, in a sense, leave behind, or at least see through the physicality, the intellectuality, the romance, etc., and see ways of, serve, of bringing out godliness in it. But if you're really on a path to God, the path is to do it, doing it because he wants you to do it. But isn't that the path to God, having a romance with Hashem? Yeah, that's the yearning, absolutely. But isn't that but also after, the ultimate goal? That's, you know, it's a very good idea. You know, think about romance and marriage, right? I mean, if you don't have romance, if you don't have romance, it's hard to, you're probably not going to get interested in, in the it's other part. In the other part. <laughs> but then what's the point then? of the Jewish marriage. The point of the Jewish marriage, there should always be romance. There should always be excitement. But the tachlis is that there should be kids, if you can have them, God willing. Good example. There should be learning to do as the, an old songwriter. Have to love There's an old songwriter. About your life. Life. There's certain things that, that, that marriage was meant for, that the Shem created love for, like fulfilling the mitzvahs of the family. Fulfilling the mitzvahs that you can't also, do unless you should be alone. Keeping Shabbos together, right. that's beautiful. That's so you can't, example. you must have that, the first part, you must have it. Otherwise, you're not going to get married without the romance and the desire and the flame, you know, the passion of love. 
Yeah, my, but, my, my comment, two things would make contribute. Mm -hmm. Two things. One, I'm wondering, please let me just say, if the, if the Greek concept of Epicureanism may explain the distinction that you're talking about feeling, and is there a feeling that was I was worried yes. in? To me, I mean, what I little I know about Epicureanism, it's really about self. Self, that's why I said self, self. self. So I'm feeling high, I want to feel beautiful, I want to feel loved. Okay. And it's, 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 it's that, and the second thing is the question of institutionalization versus desire. We desire things, we act certain things, but unless they're institutionalized, like law and the Torah, we do things, we have laws to, to conduct our behavior. It's great to have that passion, that love, but unless it's said it, institutionalized with the institution of marriage, so think, uh, the love, that's a different way, then it will die out. The same way to say we have a love for someone, we yearn for him, but then once that feeling is gone, okay. what, what's what's what, where's so the continuation? Saying, so you're saying with that analogy, we need the Torah, we need to of course, yes, love for Hashem by the mitzvahs. mitzvahs and that's right, and, and, and it's an interactive relationship, contact. and that's being disclosed. Yeah. And that's why I'm not arguing with you, Rabbi. I'm saying that maybe I'm, not arguing. I'm not saying anything. How could it be arguing? With you? You're saying also, so, I just because also, if you don't have institutionalization of something, it doesn't exist, it's a fleeting moment. Another simple way of putting this put someplace else, it's not the, God, love, the desire for God, but the desire to fill what God's desire is. Yeah. Not to fulfill your desire for God, but to fulfill what God desires. That's All right, I think we, we covered that. Okay? All right. So now, why are we talking about this? What's this got to do with Purim? Well, the first thing that all this discussion has been based on one principle, that what we've just talked about as the, the tachlis, the, uh, the reason for the yearning and, the, and, the, and why we need to yearn in order to return to do, do what he wants, is called in Hebrew, mesiris nefesh, giving yourself away. And it's not logical. That's his point. Logically, a person is wants to, wants to do what makes the person feel good. Nobody logically wants pain, and nobody will seek that out. People will seek out what feels good to them. And he gave many examples. I want to be rich, right? It's lovely to be rich. It's, and you can do a lot of things with the riches, right? And people will be, quote, mysterious nefesh for that. They will give themselves away for that. But he says, that's not mysterious nefesh amiti. That's not true, Mr. Snefish, because ultimately it's about yourself. Whether it's the interest in spiritual things or this interest in phys physical things doesn't matter. It's about you. So it's not, so Mr. Snefish is really giving yourself away in a way that's totally higher than reason. Why should you do it? If it's not good for you, why are you going to do it? If you can't enjoy it, why are you going to do it? Well, we know there are plenty, plenty of things that people do that that overcome difficulties and they and they if you're i mean they, from the such a mundane thing as i've got to go to a job right people put them their self-interest in staying in bed or whatever it is or walk or walk in the park at 11 in the morning and they put that aside and they get up at six and seven in the morning and they, and we, we're, we're structured so that we can do mysterious snuffish that mysterious snuffish is all about some objective that and this is, this is even greater than going to work is I'm, make, I'm making a living or but how about I'm going to work in order to give something of myself to somebody else to improve them or you get married there's a very big difference you get married right? it's hard to ask a girl to a pantry like I'm not here for a date she's not going to come out for a second date I didn't get married I said hard to like get married I'm sorry I said, yeah. also like to get married if a man you know it's something no, I'm just, I'm just hold it hold it the difference between going to a job because I need to put food on the table. So far, that's still about me, mm -hmm. right? And I need to eat, right? Versus I'm going to a job in order to help another person to reach a, a higher level of development. Right. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Nothing, how nothing that? about me, huh? How you it's how you look at it. And what we call, what he calls, and what we're calling in this moment, Mr. Snefish, is the second, where it's really all about God, not about you. So let's, let's start reading. Can it also be about you? I mean, I'm a teacher. I go to work because I feel like I'm doing this service to my students, but I also but you love want it. to get paid. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, two motives, sure. Well, what, what's it, you're married. What? You know, let's say married. I mean, I, I'm broke, but a girl's not going to go out on the second date if I want to get married to fill a mitzvah of Hashem of getting married. She's not going to want to go out on the second date if I invite her to a 
mabzdi a kosher food to have you for a date. So you have to have some parnasa, right? Even if you split it to be able to to be able to create a marriage sure. or something like that. But, but look what you just said. The parnasa is in order to create a marriage. You in order create to a house in order to build a mitzvah. To bring yes. what, so to bring the world to the state of fulfillment that God wants. So you don't want to lose objective, lose sight of the end. The and Shem puts that desire into your heart as well. Yes. God wants us to be married and we want to be married. Right. So it's a reflection. Whatever we want, we know God wants. Well, not whatever we want. <laughs> but yeah. In a certain way. But I know what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So what we just talked about at length is the second line on the page. That any ulterior motive, ulterior motive being other than to fulfill what God wants, Second line, this is not Mesir Snefesh Amiti. This is not true Mesir Snefesh. Be'inyan avoidus Hashem. You have the place? It's not service of Hashem. See, the word avoida is an interesting word because avoida we could translate service, but built into it is the word evet, a, a servant. A servant serves his master in order to fulfill the will of the master. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate point of why we do mitzvahs. That it... Since, you know, just something with, related to what you're saying, since mitzvah is also the, the, the word mitzvah means to connect, right? It's not something, this that we are dedicated and strive to be dedicated to do what God wants isn't something that's foreign to us. On the, on the contrary, it's something that we are built intrinsically to do because we are, he built us as an image of him. We're built in his image and we're connected with him. So even there, you could, in a very like refined way, say, ultimately, I'm doing it for me, because him and I really are no different, right? Well, I mean, I mean, Nasa Adam Bitzalmeinu, let us make man in our image. I'm just a mirror image of him anyway. But with that, no, my mysterious nefesh is all about him, not about. Him. Mom, you're, you're not forgive me for Peter Duffy. You're not. I don't know if I could forgive you for Peter. Oh, okay. 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 Don't forgive me. But you won't. Not, not the <laughs> physical mirror of your Hashem, but if you have a. Mirror images are used, mirror images to mirror match. There's a, there's a recent type of operation from the 60s and the 70s by the United States and the Russian Federation. It's not visual, but that's not, I think you're not talking about mirror match in this instance. No, I don't mean it. We're, we're, we're built in his image. He has 10 spheros, we have 10 powers. All right, but not obviously. So we're akin, image. we're akin we're to him. with the physical capacity to, 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 a, to, a, to strive towards the Kadosh Baruch Hu, but not a mirror. Of the Forget mirror. Okay. Yeah. We're built uh, as a, uh, as a, we're built. In the, sim, in the same structure that he is. So, Im Kain, third line. This is a person, he's describing the person who's after his own glory, and he's Mashuka. Mashuka, he's uh, sunk. He's sunk in his own wills, his natural wills. El Shemagil, and natural wills can include spiritual things. I mean, we have natural spiritual will, wills and desires. He wants to be more rich. So that's not Mesiris Nefesh Amiti. What is true Mesiris Nefesh? And you have no other desire other than him. writes, I don't want anything else in the world, not physical pleasures, not spiritual pleasures. I only want you. Now, is there a touch? Could you say there's a touch of selfishness there? I mean, is there, I, I only want you. But what he means is, my whole desire is to do what you want. All I really, this is a song that I like from a long time ago. All I really want to do is bring out the best in you, in me and you. That's, that's, it's, that's what I, I want to bring out the best in me so that I can be the best for you. That's self -sad. That's Mesiris Nefesh. All right. Now this, okay, let's finish this. Okay. And to do this, you have to get above your head, above reason, above and beyond your rational way of work. To be do Mesiris Nefesh Amit. To give yourself away. You don't normally want to give you yourself away. You want to away. be better. You want to better yourself so that you can be better for someone else. So, but yeah, and that's the important part. So you can be better for someone else, right? Not for me. I'll go through real mysterious. I'll go through pain for you, God. Right? And that's what the hallmark. He, we, what you were missing miss the end. That's the hallmark of how we, as a people, behaved at the time of Purim. We, we kept our 
our core self intact in a time when we were abused, we were threatened, we were threatened to uh, you know, come and threaten to kill us if we didn't bow down. And Mordechai is the, you know, the, the tzaddik of that generation the, who emblemizes the epitome of not accepting that and being able to be Mr. I'm willing to give up my life for my God. And no, no pleasure that you can give me, no feast you can give me, nothing is going to interfere with that. Want to share with you? Yeah. Second paragraph. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Uh, Mitch, Elisheva is going to read. Let me know if uh, you have any trouble picking her up. Okay. So this, yeah, so this is Purim. Do you want me to translate or do you want to translate? No, you translate. So this is the Purim. The word Purim is because of the word Pur is, is a lottery. Haman, how did he decide when to do what he was going to do? He spun a top and it came out on a date which he knew was the date that Moshe Rabbeinu would passed away, the leader of the Jewish people. What he didn't know, apparently, was it's also the day that he was born. Moshe Rabbeinu was born. But he picked that day, not all people read, he didn't think about it. He spun the, 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 the top and whatever came up, that's it. So you see, Imagine. he, let me finish, let me finish the sentence. He is the opposite side. He's the same thing, and you've come, you're used to this idea, not everybody is, that on the side of holiness, on the side of klippa, on the side of the negative side, it's a, it's a positive. Zela uma zeosa lefim. Hashem made everything equal. There's the white light of Kedusha, which is the, the dark light of Tuma. Yeah, and the dark light of Tuma. Para, I think you had something with one of your teachers in Brooklyn about the Paro, the word Para is a, the Aramaic word is Ipariru. Ipariru means to shine. Ipariru. He shone with the light of the other side. And what's the, the, light, the light of the side? Yes, it's ultimately darkness, but it's, it's full of itself. And so full of itself that it radiates self, its fullness of self over a whole domain. And it shines the light of self, self-centeredness. It's a Putin. It's a dictator. That's what it is. And, but it's huge. It's hugely powerful. That's the light of, of para ipariru, para of the clipper. I mean, the, the light of the clipper. But ultimately, that's a, the light of God. And that's what Moshe was afraid of. Like, ultimately, it's the holy light. That's, ultimately, that's it's ultimately, it, it's a hapa. It's mahapa to a holy light. What does mahapa mean? No, mahapa so means ultimately. transformed. Transform. Transform. But it comes from the well, same source. Well, here we go. This is interesting. And this will get to Abdul Layyad. What you're saying, that it's ultimately a holy light. If you, holy uh, let, me just, let me just explain something. This is important. What you're saying and what you're asking. If you, we'll use the expression, drill down. You'll drill down into deeper and deeper levels of God. Right? So when you're on the surface, and we'll use the expression, you're on the surface of the earth, there's lots of differentiation, lots of differentiation, different places, different air, different feeling, different country, city, et cetera, et cetera. When you go down into the dirt, and there's a lot more similarity, even though you'll find different kinds of earth in different places, but it's all dirt. And then you'll go deeper and deeper. Soon the muscle will break down. You'll go deeper, deeper into the, the hot water and the fire in the center of the earth, right? And think of that as a, mush, a metaphor for godliness. Godliness expresses itself, everything in Odno Vago. There's nothing besides God, right? But there are, God, God himself emanates layers and layers and layers outward of himself, so far out that in, some, in, in most cases, and in most human beings, until they understand really what's going on, they see what's going on in front of their, their eyes as the reality, right? And it creates a lot of anxiety and all kinds of negative behavior. But if you know that there's something driving it, right? And that driving it is, is God. Okay, but that still is a level of an expression of God. God is driving, right? And God drives, really basically, he derives a reality which has two sides, the side of Kedusha and the side on the other side. We call it the other side. This is the, the source of duality and duality fragments into multiplicity. But at a deeper source, if this is what you're saying, then, then I would agree with you. If you're not, we, we can disagree. Uh, at a deeper sense, when you get back to the core, 
the core, core, core of God. There is no separation whatsoever. There is no dark. There is no light. There is no good. There is no bad. There is only atzmus, they call it, etzim. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Is this creation from Atmos or is it creation from Yishin Ayin? Are there conceptual uh, Please, don't, well, that's another topic. How the I'm not talking about how the creation goes. But, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about that. something else entirely, which is how ultimate simplicity can give rise, does give rise. This is a, in the, the model of what the ultimate simplicity. Take, yeah, I have my hand. Thank you. Thank you. How ultimate simplicity gives rise to multiplicity. A muscle for this is that's brought into cities is a muscle of passing white light through a prism. So think about this. I have light in the room. It's light in the room. You don't see any colors. You just see light. So in God's essence, there, there is no visibility or tangibility for any kind of colors or differentiation. But if you put this prism in front of me, this prism is one word in this is the prism, which is the tzimtzum. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to go into it. But he puts this thing, which comes from himself, by the way, because oh, yeah, that which question. comes from himself. Where else would it come from? Yeah, there's no other place that it could come from. Yeshni'ayin. Yeshni'ayin. He puts something in front of himself. That's the prism. And then on the other side of the prism, well, there's a whole rainbow. Right? The reality the so where did that created. rainbow come from? You can't say that it wasn't there. It's there, but is there in a state of ultimate, what's the word that's always used? Because it's Peshitus. Peshitus is ultimate simplicity. Simplicity, but also Peshitus is abstraction. It's abstraction, like when you take off your garments, you, you remove. So, Peshitus is also to remove. To remove. Pasha. Pasha. Pasha Tabagodne. You take off your garments, right? When you take the sir, the garments come from the Kadosh Baruch the Rach Etzraal. He creates the garments from himself. In the he creates the garments. He creates the tzimtzum. But the point that we're bringing out here is that this pare of the other side, this itpariru, this shining light of the other side, is really it's, it's from the exact same source as kedusha. Now, I want to give you a, a good I want to give you an example since you brought it up of how this can go awry. That can go awry. Meaning, well, you could think. And this would be totally erroneous, but people would think so. Since there really, in essence, is no difference between good and evil, what does it matter? In fact, in a, a minor I just learned from the, the, the Alter Rabbi, he poses this question. It's actually posed in Tanya. Ma ichvisle, what difference does it make to him whether we do good or we do evil? Because in him, to him, it's all the same. So this gave rise, to, and this is a, you know, a, a, an authentic way of thinking. This is not false. But is it that Tovara? I mean, that's from the right. first day of creation. Okay. Actually. But that fell out from something before. The Eitzhadas Tagara was an interruption and a diffusion and a, and a bifurcation of something that had been unified before. So that means good and evil were un in a unified place before, right? And in that unified place, there's no distinction. So from that perspective, what difference does it make? So there was a huge. Uh, blasphemy that arose in the Jewish world in the 1600s. It was the blasphemy of a man uh, in the name of Shabtai Tzvi. Yeah, that's right. And Shabtai Tzvi, um, I read a, a, a biography, a, a history of this uh, years and years ago, and two things impressed me, which I'll share with you. One was that in a time, this is 1600s, there's no internet, there's no technology. His awareness of him spread all over Europe from the Middle East. It was huge. Number one. Number two, he innovated a bracha. If you go to the place that we're talking about, he innovated this bracha. Baruch atah Hashem. Blessed are you, God. Hamater es hakol. <laughs> who permits everything. Because there is no good and bad at that point, right? So it's, it's a very, it's like a, for us, it's a paradox. We have to hold in our mind there really is good and bad. But you know what? There really isn't. <laughs> but there really is, right? <laughs> so I want this. You get it? We don't, we don't want to confuse him. God made it be. He, he made it be. He brought out, he made, he made the, the experience of evil. And just as he made the experience of good. And everything came from himself. 
I would get into that. I remember that. Interesting, because that requires one line. I mean, that, that, that requires <laughs> that's something that, that requires something that you need to could touch on the exercise of free will and the theoretical perspective to choose between good and evil and therefore choose life. So I wonder what if the underlying exercise of that choice is a deeper teleological objective as to why Hashem is giving us choice and it goes deeper. Not because of just the paradigm of good and evil which emanates from the Kabbalah Baruch Hu, but our ability to exercise that choice. And I, want, I understand that to the mitzvahs, maybe, I mean, I do understand that the mitzvahs in exercising that choice, we're going closer to Hashem. So maybe there's a little remnant in terms of the, part, the teleological process of Hashem creating the world and creating us. That's something I'm just curious about. Something a little deeper. Is there any in Purim? Okay, you had said Purim is that. That's what, I guess that's why we're talking about it, because when you get higher than rational thinking, you're in a space which is not subject to reason. So re reason is where I think this is okay, this is not okay, this has value, this doesn't have value, and Purim is the, the lottery, which is higher than that, at a deeper level. So Kach, you got the second second line? He, 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 he determined the day of Purim the way the lottery would fall out. So Kach Yokum Hadov. So similarly, similarly, on the side of Kedusha, everything it depends on a person, on the will of, of where he places his will in Tefillah. The Tefillah Sagairal would uh, excuse me. Uh, Maybe the gross one said it's not the feeling, it's how follows the girl, the way the girl falls out. The His will follows the way the lottery comes out. Right. So in other words, he'll want it if it's chosen. It's usually yes. the other way around. If you pick something, you'll want what you would be, then you know what your real desire is. Right. But he, whatever this, the wherever the girl fall, falls out, that's what he would like to actually yip la girl, hein or la, whether the girl says, whether the lottery says yes or no, that will be his will. Right? So he said, he, it's humming, thinking about God's will. Since God comes from this essential place where there is no difference, right? It doesn't make any difference to him. So the lottery comes from a place above reason. So that's my tool to know what God wants. And it's spun out this way. Ah, I'm in charge. He told me I'm in charge. Hum, he told Haman that he's in charge. He says he uses that, uses that word. So he, he went according to the goral, because the goral, is in the, the lottery, is an expression of something at least getting close to the simple will, where there is no inclination to either one side or the other. Is this the same question that we're talking about, that God was before Pshitis, Pshitis or some Pshit? Or is it God, no, God, God is is what the expression Tachlus of So this So the goyrel represents that. Tachlus of Tachlus of meaning there's no in, there's no reason to incline this way or that way, right. because it's all the same. And that some pashut means I have no reason to incline this way or that way. Whatever the goyrel comes out is what exactly I want. right. And this level of God, see what he's done, he's taken the goyrel and and said, this is an analogy for Tachlis Apashitas, the actual essence of God, where there is isn't no inclination one or the other. And this is what's called, in the language of Kabbalah, the will of wills. In other words, what's behind God's will? God, again, it could go with layers. There's this deepest layer, which is Tachlis Apashitas, when it's like, deepest layer with has no distinction whatsoever, yet it's the driver of everything. And the next layer out is, he says, I want this. How does that relate to poor? I'm missing something. Poor. Like, the poor is the place it? which is above any inclination this but way or that. Is the one that, 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 so what's the underlying, why are we bringing this so up? He says, he says, he says, so sort of the Shabbat Aitzvian kind of thing. God is going to show me what he wants because What's what? your big analogy between, between Haman, Haman and Shabbat? Yeah, yeah. Haman I was asking you that. Right, right. God is showing me what we, he's going to, he's going to show me something emerging from his Peshitas with this little thing, because that's what the God really is. It has no reason to fall this way that's or that. That's the analogy of the, of the, of the, of the like, like Keshes. 
Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear that Esther Dirtzer is also in Bad Adam? No, I didn't. I didn't know. Yes, I did. okay. So God will show me his will. His, his will will emerge from that pool of ultimate simplicity where there is no inclination one way or another. That's, that's, how, he, that's how he creates. From the state of ultimate simplicity, he brings forth some desire. So I'll do the same thing. I'll take this Pashita thing that has above reason, spin it, and in where it lands way. will show me what God And this time in a holy way. In a, well, not Haman. No, no, but we're saying yeah, this, same what thing he's, yeah, he's, is exactly, way. exactly. I don't understand that. I'm missing something. Like, we'll, we'll take, you know, an estrog, and I, one way or another, I don't care if this estrog is shaken <laughs> or not, you know. But my will will become that I want to shake this Esther the Malod because that's what Hashem wants. So that's right. I have no real intrinsic I interest in an Esther. I understand. So you're saying is because Hashem wants it, that's the will. So you're just. But there are certain instances that you something? do something, have. Something's, something's missing. There's a connection. What do you mean? Is not, we're talking about Pshitus and Keshes, right? We're saying that. Keshes. What, is, what, is, what, is, what do you mean, Keshes? Hashem, Hashem, Hashem is going to reveal his will to the poor. Haman. Talk about the same Shabbat. Where do you see the word Keshes? Simple, no, no, I'm giving the example that I meant Rabbi Keshe before. Let me finish the question. So, the same way Haman is utilizing the question of poor to represent the, the, the will of Hashem and Pshitus to reveal itself to us, is the same way you're saying by now that the Shabbat Tzvi said, you know, everything is mutter. Everything is mutter. Everything, is, everything, everything is mutter, so in but, essence. But the distinction is in this situation, Haman, Shem Makshmo, is saying that Hashem will reveal his will to me. Through the utilization, what well, I said, what I'm sorry, really will to me through the poor, all right, right. without right. any activity on our own. So I'm trying to understand where the activity is. When we fill the mitzvahs, we're taking an action which is pursuant to Hashem's will, correct? Where Haman is taking an action by assuming the poor, but that's he's not doing pursuing, the same thing. He's, but it's not pursuing he's to discuss, Hashem's will. He's assuming it's pursuing he's Hashem's discovering will. Hashem. He says, Look, this is how Hashem operates. Well, pull him, maybe we'll try this. In his, in his Peshitas, in his Peshitas, God has no inclination one way or the other, right? And that's where we say, why, what, what does, the, since he has no inclination one way or the other, why then does it make any difference to him what we do? The answer is because at a more external level, he decided that it, he decided that it would make some difference to him. So oh, I understand. Okay. how do I see that? How do I see that? I need some tool for seeing that. I want, I want to take his Peshitas where there's nothing, not when, where there's nothing, and you can go any way, that's the top any way at all and i want to see how it comes out because god's simplicity will come out he will say i want this and i don't want that so when the girl falls one way that's an indication of coming out of simplicity and indicating how things should go and how things should go the way well they fell out the way i want it. this it's a time for me to come to the fore and get rid of the jewish people and the mitzvahs the Jewish... well that wasn't the question the question, the question right. was just when Go ahead. You want me to read? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is um, about five lines down after the Haratzim. One of the things you have to learn how to do a yeshiva, and everybody, is what you what well, first thing I learned in yeshiva is to keep your finger oh, in the place. Okay. What you while you can do everything else okay. is keep your finger <laughs> in the place. <laughs> That's how you always okay, before to... before you start reading again, would you move the microphone closer? Oh, to Elisheva, you mean? Yes, please. I love mm -hmm. Elisheva's reading, but it's hard to hear. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Elisheva. Yeah, Hi. Um, uh, good to hear from you, Elisheva. I didn't know you were here. All right, so this is the idea of Purim. A new idea here. This is the idea of Purim, which Purim is higher than Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur so Yom Kippur is only called Kippurim, right? We're playing with the word, Kippur. We're using the word as if it's, uh, what is that? Light. light. What do you call it? In key. Analogy. Like no, light. Light. Light is key. It's like this, to okay. Analogous to it. So, it's, so Purim is Purim, and Yom Kippur is only like Purim. So from here, we deduce. This is not original. This is from Chazal an interpretation. In what way is Purim higher than Yom Kippur? And it's not, you're saying, it's not even like, it's not even Purim itself. It's not even like Purim. It's 
It's not like Purim, exactly, right, exactly. Translate, we're going to translate. You want to do it? So he's saying that Yom Purim, Yom Kippur is just like Purim in the fact that on Purim, Haman chose a lottery to see what date, and on Yom Kippur, they chose a lottery to see which is which goat will fall down Azazel and which goat will go. Right. So there's a commonality. Which push down Azazel, yeah. right? Right. Was, I didn't know there was a lot of it. It was done by a lot of it's, mm-hmm. it's an interesting hefek. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. So what is the Indian? What is it? It has a commonality to Yom Kippur. There was a lottery there. Mm-hmm. But we just said Purim is much, much higher, higher than Yom Kippur. Right. But the lottery on Purim was just about a date. Go ahead, read. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> He's going to answer the question. Okay. Shazehu, hold up. Shazehu gam ken taluy b'chinat ratzon ha pashut mekor kol ha-ratzonot kulhu b'kanal. Explain. Well, okay. I'm going to start with Farbad. I'll go Farbad. Where we said that so currently is so here it is here it is shagam bi yom kippur ho ya in go even though on yom kippur there's something in common with purim which we expressed as the lottery that determined which goat would go over the cliff and which not so gatim told bi khin surat an apoch so it was also an example of the same thing the revelation of this, what what comes from god's simple will into some choice through the lottery right so it it comes from his simple will which he tells us by the way is the source of all wills, as you would, the source of will is the source of all will, but I translated it for you that God's Ratzon HaPashit, or God's, his, yeah, his Ratzon HaPashit, which is a will which is simple, which has no yet diversion and, and divisiveness, not, not diversity, does emerge into a choice of this or that. Ah, so they have that similarity. Ah, Mikol Mokin, are you told the Oifin HaTshuva? Yom Kippur depends on Shuvah. On how we did Shuvah. And, and on the whole Indian of Shuvah. Shehariyem HaKippurim, any metacha built the emsois of the Shuvah. You don't get forgiveness on Yom Kippur without literally the intermediary or the mechanism of Shuvah. You have to repent. Mm-hmm. You have to come back. Dafka. Now this is the, you want to go? You want me to go? Yeah, yeah, you go. Vegam shehat the Shuvah, he bebechin is Shuvah ilah. And even though on Yom Kippur, the shuvah that we're doing is called shuvah Allah, which in general generally means shuvah from love, as opposed to shuvah from fear. There are other meanings in shuvah Allah, but we'll take that one. Yes, I, I want to come close to God, and I'm returning to God, and, I, and I'm making decisions not to do things which separate me from God, right? The Hebrew is Mesiris Nefesh, and this involves Mesiris Nefesh. I'm going to stay away from things that I have a desire for. I'm going to Push myself away in order to come closer to what you want. And nevertheless, if you don't do this level of shuvah, the day doesn't atone for you. You know, it says in another place, what's shuvah? How, how, how is it? So we're going to go now back the other way. God's simple will, his simple, his simple essence, right? Where there is no good, there's no bad, shabtai svi, etc. From there emerges a will for this and not for that, right? So if you can't free yourself from that, from that level of existence, so you're not going to get back to God's essence, right? So that's what it says. If you don't do Shuvah Allah, it doesn't, you have to get to the place where there's no difference. That's the, the source of forgiveness. The source of forgiveness is that place where God can say, you're right. It doesn't matter to me, and therefore I forgive you. But you have to, right? But you have to. I mean, you have to be really careful with this, right? You can't start out that way, which is the Shabtai Svi thing. Since that's where you are in deepest, deepest place that nothing matters, so that's where I'll start. That's, he said, "No, I told you. Yeah, that's where I am in, in my essence of essence of essence of essence. But I have a will that has emerged from that place." 
where I really want things to be done in this way and not that way. So if you don't come back, if you don't behave like that, if you're not self-sacrificing to do what I want, you can't touch that place where nothing matters. You see the paradox? If you don't behave in ways that matter out of love and fear, you can't touch the place where nothing matters. You get it? Yeah. It's like if you don't have a structure, you can't enjoy a vacation. Good. Okay. Good. I like to you do it. It's just no. I could serve as a zero. Ah, however, but, but, but are you Jesus, saying something? Or the, Jew, the Jewish people, <laughs> Jewish people were to serve as a zero. And they were what? The Jewish people were theoretically to serve as a zero for the hands of Haman. We have I don't know serve, what you're saying. We have there the go? as a zero in the Mikipurim, right? Which is part of making Shuba and also symbolically. The Averos rest when the when the when the of rests his hand on the seers of the zone and it sends it down. It's supposed to lick a pair for Averos. When we don't have the seer of the it's interesting because and the tshuva. This may be an example of the fact that Haman Shemachmo was trying to set the Jewish people up as a seer of the I don't know. Let's finish because it's already nine thirty and we have Sorry. to. Uh, oh right. Are we going to finish? Yeah, I want to finish. I really do want to finish it. Okay, then I'll just let me blast through this. Okay, I'm going to blast through this. All right, I'll only speak when I when it needs something I think needs to be said. Blast away, Purim, huh? What? Blast away. Blast away. However, Purim, in the post Yom Kippur, Yeshba Yisrin Maila, it has an advantage. Mashem Yom Kippur, which is not in Yom Kippur, but who in Yom Kippur's nefesh shalahem which is the idea of their total given overness, which was higher than reason. It's not if I do this or if I do that. It's I'm all yours. I know ifs, buts, and anything. I'm totally given over to you. Without any desire, that my own desire, not nothing that's going to please me. It's not my will, it's your will. I have no other will than to be completely given over to you. And this is why, this is the language of the Gemara. For this reason, these days are called Purim, al Shem Hapur, because of the lottery. Instead of Tshuva, Purim is through fe feasting, the Simcha, and through joy, not through repentance. The idea of eating, you take something internal to you. You have some wine and you're rejoicing. So there's some illumination that comes, it says, into a kaling, into a vessel. Through simple, what happened? You don't go back to Hashem. You don't nullify yourself. And this is what's something we always talk about. On the contrary, you're here in your body. You're here enjoying. But your enjoying is not about me enjoying. Your enjoying is because you have given yourself away. And this is what we call Adela Yadda. You've given yourself away to a place where above reason, but brought into body. Or as you said, light above reason brought into a vessel. And it says about the future, with weeping there will come. It says about uh, that because in, there's a stage when... We had this stage, actually, we talked about it in today's Tanya, I think, at Matan Torah, when the light was revealed, but the vessels weren't ready, the kaling had not been uh, worked and fixed in order to, to hold them. So the, our bodies burst apart when we had that revelation. The kaling wasn't yashi. L'chat, the deki, and therefore there was weeping. Avo, the Purim, Shezokhu l'mayli yaseter, where we come to a higher level, the higher level where the body is now a vessel for God not something that's antagonistic to God or antithetical to God or something that is concealing God, but a vessel to God. We come to a level, which is a high, we come down to a higher level. Which is the true Mesir Snefil that we spoke about above. To be clinging into the essence of the, or of the infinite light. And that infinite light can dwell in a vessel. Now, these are words. I hope you're in I'll try to say very little because of time, but that infinity should rest in something finite is by us, and I've said this in the other class, is a paradox. It doesn't exist. But when we finish the avoda, the service of 
rectifying anything that needs to be rectified. What we're doing is building vessels, which are able, they're still vessels, but they're able to contain what they call the lights of Torah. They're able to contain infinite infinity. And I always quote this uh, English poet, William Blake, who is a metaphysical poet, metaphysical poet, who said, who's one, I mean, many, this is a long poem, but one line that jumps out at me is, to hold infinity in the palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. It's a paradox, but in the future, there is no paradox because the palm of our hand will have been so rectified through our avoida that the infinite light can, can stay there. And that's what he called, I, in his words, we're clinging in essence of God and that's able to dwell in a vessel. That's the answer rectification. Or a vessel that had formerly not been able to tolerate the light. I'll be histalchalous in its normal state where it's narrower and narrower and more and more concealed. And that's the reason for the mitzvah. Because this level of existence, it's not lights and vessels. This is a level of atzmas where there is no distinction between lights and vessels. And you can imagine, I mean, it's, try to imagine this, living in a state where you are simultaneously aware of your body, but the body is not at all blocking um, in a bit any shine and 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 and, 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 and penetration Amazing. of godliness, right? Not block. That was the state. That state was something like that. This state is even higher than the state that existed before the Eitz Das. Because you you through process of rectification to the mitzvahs, mm -hmm. unlike total right. total simplicity, and that explains why. You have a choice between good and evil that you spoke about. And that yeah. explains why That's the why they're called days of feasting, the simcha, and kenichnis yayin yoytzisod, when wine comes in, the secrets go out. It's not when wine comes in, you get drunk on your face. When wine comes in, the you become enlightened. The line of the Torah, the Yain Torah, the Torah, the Soida, the secrets of the Torah. So do we learn Torah on Purim? So you can, I, I, inebriated, does that, does that make us more understand? <laughs> well, if you use the word inebriated, Probably not, because <laughs> inebriated means you know you're drunk. Well, but if if you're in a you, if you're in a state if you're drinking, I, I'll answer. Drunk. If you're in a state where what you're even imbibed has bring you to bringing you, you've just reached a state of more receptivity, then of course. But can you lean more in a high in like a wine state? If in a On proper burn? in a proper wine state, there's On a difference burn? between. What's the difference? Between being open, right? This is not being high. Oh, yeah, high. Yeah. Uh -huh. When wine comes in, secrets come out. That's a state. That's the state. That's the state. It's not kishinikni siyayin, you go flat on the floor. Because right. that, you know, nothing's going to happen right. here. Right? You drink enough. The basumi puri. The person is at to get to this state. This, this is, you could live with this on day, day four. Just think about this. The statement from the Gemara. You are obligated on Purim, the Basumi Bapuri, the Basumi, to drink or whatever you do to get to a state, Adalayada, where you don't know. And we're talking about this as a higher level of consciousness. We're not talking about this as Adalayada and flat on my face. But it's not literally Adalayada, because we do know the difference between bad and evil. evil. Yeah, evil. we won't necessarily get there, but then we're pointing that. Anyway, we want to, we want to get to where we're trying to get to that place where we live with the unrational, where we're seeing the super rational, which is ultimately the godly in things, the thing which is above reason. So is it right. possible yeah. to well, get, is it really possible then to get to that state of absolute atmos while still living within our bodies? No, not these days, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. In the future, it will be. That's the promise of Lassad that, that right. That's that what you just said is what will be. It's not possible right now. Well, okay. I can't say that blanketly. Maybe mm -hmm. there are some people who can. But uh, in my con from anything I've learned in my own awareness, no. Because, uh, you know, the only way that I can, in my own life, think about not being aware of my, at all of my body is to be unconscious. And in an unconscious state, nothing's going to happen. And it's, well, the ultimate you know, is anesthetized. Like a patient anesthetized upon the table. You don't have no awareness of your body, but nothing, nothing. So I'm going to answer you no. Let me know if uh, you have the experience though. Lisa, got it?
Got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let us know if you get to that stage, though. <laughs> okay. So, so we want to get to this stage where we loosened up, opened up enough that secrets come into us and we're conscious of them. And when he said secrets, we're aware of God's presence above reason, deeper than reason. God is not reasonable. God is essential. So have some awareness of that. That should be revealed in one's vessels, in one's body. And it has a name. This state is, has a name in Kabbalah. It's called the love of delights. Shalifne Hatzilus, which is higher than the world of Hatzilus, higher than the world of any emanation, getting closer to God's essence himself. Because Atzilus, even, I don't know if you know about the worlds of Atzilus, the four worlds, Atzilus is the most rarefied of all worlds where there's literally zero blockage between the world's awareness of itself and its awareness of God. But from what, we, what we're talking about, compared to Atzimus, this is a level which still there's a vessel there that can't take Atzimus. It can only take some really, really deep high level of God's emanation, but not God himself. Since Haman, like Parai, same idea, wanted to receive from God's essence of the Esau, which is not called God's will, but his will of wills. Will, you go all the way back to the point where will or originates. The steaming, it's also called in the language of Kabbalah, steam of the cold steam. He wants to touch, feel, experience, live with the secret of all secrets. Not just the secret, but the secret of the secrets. Or the secret, yeah, but it's on the third floor. It used to be on the second, no? Yeah, but my wife is busy with a lot of things on the second. No, no, wait, wait, don't wait for that. No, no, let's go up to the third floor. Okay, my niece back outside. Please don't worry. Okay. Okay? So, one's will is for the secrets of the secrets. So you can go secrets of the secrets of the secrets all the way back. That's so Haman wanted, that's that's what Haman wanted, that's what Shabtai Svi wanted. Essentially, it's what we all want, but there's a way to get there and there's a way to be knocked down from there. So this uh, uh, okay. Hmm? Okay, okay. So he did everything against Kedusha. He threw the lottery, which is the yeah, the lottery. In front of himself, so he's lifting himself up in what we call in Yiddish, it's an interesting Hebrew word, chutzpah, self promotion. I lift up myself like an eagle, that's the expression. I'm full of myself. He's lifting himself up, but he's not lifting it. What we're talking about is lifting yourself up through nullification, through thinning out. He lifts himself up through thickening himself. This is the, the, the dictator versus Melech HaMashiach. Melech HaMashiach is, complete, is characterized by complete bitl, complete openness and transparency. And the Melech of any other, who is not, the Melech, the king, who is on the side of not Kedusha, is, is characterized by just the opposite. Total thickness. It's like the Rebbe, who, who, who Hashem's words go through him, flow through him. Right. Hashem's will, whatever Hashem wants, like that's what he tells that's everyone it. to do. No barrier. Rather than you know, Stalin. Rather than Stalin or Haman, who is the full of chutzpah, the Hisnas is raising himself up. It, we, uh, with, you know, the Hisnas is Yisera, with an extra measure of self-aggrandizement. As is written <coughs> about the idol worshippers, it says about the idol worshippers, Hashem says it's a Pesach, Im if you lift yourself up like an eagle, meaning with your self-centeredness and your audaciousness, then I'm going to push you down. But this is also something which is above reason, right? The dictator is driven by power, whether it makes any sense or not. It doesn't matter to him or her. I'm just going. I'm not, and that's a great, great meter. And Steve Jobs once said about, uh, you know, the guy who created Apple Computer, it's a famous quote. He said, the only people who can change the world are the people who are crazy enough to think they can. So you either be crazy with godliness or you'd be crazy with the opposite, right? But craziness is the Rebbe part always, of, the, the Rebbe always <laughs> brought this out, you know, about when he when he started talking. Excuse me, are you Jewish? Excuse me, are you Jewish? Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, to do what the Rebbe did was nuts. I mean, according to everybody else. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so higher than Das for Seichel. The Gamla Maila Min Haratsan, even higher than one's will, right? You're giving beyond what I want, I'm giving myself over. Zeo Shahipul Gam Kem Gurilas. And this is the idea of the lottery. Alezer Yom, that they should fall on a certain day. Sheipul Kach, if it falls this way, Yehav Felis Agoyel Lifni Homan. So the way the lottery fell out in front of Homan, Ainu Sheipul Agoyel, he cast the lock. Liyusur Tzone Tolu Begoyel, he made all of his will align with chance. Chance is higher than reason. Kedug Mishav Felis Agoyel, which is akin to the the Goyel falling out. B'Shnei on Yom Kippur, the two goats of Yom Kippur. The two goats, Lifne Hashem, in front of Hashem. He wanted to lift himself out for the Damas of Kedusha and compare himself to the highest levels of Kedusha, which is also above reason. In order to receive from there, he wanted to make him put himself above reason to receive from above reason. So, so things were countered. That thought which he had on the Yehudim al Roshe, the Tolu Oisa, instead of that, his head of heads was hung from the gallows. His head was hung. Uh, and his children were hung, right? His 10 children were hung. Hang, hang. It's the correct word. Okay. That is the correct word. Thank you. Thank yes, you. it's hanged. Hanged. Hang. Hang. Thank you very much. Everybody I sense. hung up the phone and I hanged the Russia. Got it. Uh, try not to make the mistake again. Now, Ken, I'm sorry, don't get hung up on it. <laughs> <laughs> very cute, Elisa, very cute. And therefore, we call these days Purim, right? Al Shem HaPur, because of the poor. And it's higher than Yom Kippur, as we said above. Right? The Yidden took upon themselves. To such an extent that these days, this became, now this is the hallmark of Purim, different than any other holiday. I mean, every holiday has its hallmark. Pesach going out of Egypt. Sukkot being under the protective shade of the transcendent levels of God. Purim is all about living It's all about living. Yes. How is that the same as living in Adelaide? What is the you point? missed what the point. Well, you didn't miss it, but you need to. What is the Yeah, you need to hear the push. Well, let me just answer the question. Because the level of above reason is brought down into reason. The Ein Sof, the infinite, which is above any kind of limitation, is brought down into the finite. You live in vessels, which is back to our always the subject. We mavara the, the vessels, we fix the vessels so they can be containers for infinity. We can have adole yada while we're what still. What does that mean, yada? So you don't know the difference between good and evil. Uh, which is synonymous, hopefully take away tonight, with atzmas ein sof. It's synonymous with essence of God, where there is no difference. That can be experienced in a body. So when it says that the Yehudim kimu v'kiblu alehem, that's what they would do. They accepted upon themselves the the l'mala mitam v'dasness and brought it in kibul and they makabled it. They received it. Got it. That's why they took it into the Torah. The they said because they, they voluntarily accepted yeah, upon themselves. Like voluntarily assumed upon without having the threat of the of the har. Yeah. The so that's what it says in the, in the also in the Gila, that that at this time we were makabel. We received internally that which we had started at Matan Torah. Mm -hmm. But at Matan Torah, there was no internalization. That's that's emblemized by clear. that's em emblemized by our souls flying out of our body. So we had an, an, an experience of infinity, but our Kalim weren't ready for it. Purim, it's interesting how this whole idea of, of, of Biruring and completing Biruring sort of spins through all of all of our history. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a similar example. That through Adelayada, we went through torture. We went through torture. Torture is part of the refinement. Like in, in the Meshul is brought, in order to get a piece of gold out of the dirt, you have to break up the dirt, right? So the, that's part of the, the part of the refinement. And when refinement is, is completed, our vessels are strong enough, broad enough, uh, open enough 
to receive the infinite. Through and that's what they did, and that's what they did. Through the process of rectification, yes. said previously. So the rectification and comes first. Process. The rectification comes first. Comes first. And that's why Purim is there are two things that the, doesn't say this here, but it's, it's in the Gemara. There, that there are two things which will last in the Torah, Purim and the Halachas. So what does it mean it will last? The Torah is eternal. After Purim, you said it will last when? Forever, as we oh, got, okay. as we evolve Purim into future halachas. future okay. times, what will last is Purim and Halachas. And Shabbos also. Well, I'm saying no, not Shabbos, not Yom Kippur, nothing. Okay. But you got to understand what that means. The Torah is eternal. The Torah is eternal. What's going to last? You meaning what will halacha always? Is Shabbos. Halacha is everything. No, no, but no, no. I understand what he's saying. He's saying Shabbos and Yom Kippur, but Shabbos is a taste of Olam Haba. So more to be in Olam Haba. That's, right. That's what he's saying. So, so he's saying, so he's saying, what is going to be in existence? The halachas are eternal, and he said Purim, unlike everything else. But why would Purim? Halacha, I'll tell you, halicha, halacha is lush and halicha, which means to go. When you're talking about God, the going is infinite. So there's always going to be going, and there's always going to be knowing how to go and how you're supposed to go. Logically, a conclusion with that. That's a lot. Yes. And Purim, because there's always more Adela Yada. What's one person's Yada is another person's Adela Yada. What does Adela Yada mean again? I'm sorry. Well, he doesn't know the difference between no, the Right. So I'll get to a certain level. This is, you know, Tzadikim, it said Tzadikim always arrives. Let me finish this Siddiquim are always rising. They go from strength to strength. So what does it mean? The tzaddik starts from a point where the physicality is porous, uh, not porous. Um, penetrable. Penetrable or even prevents no barrier. Flexible. You know, even, yeah, prevents no barrier at all, right? But that's a nice level to be at. But from a higher level, when you go up a level, the previous level is, you could look at it as a darkness compared to the next level. And when you're at that level, the next level higher, the previous level is a darkness. So there'll always be halifa. There'll always be going. Is that what we mean when we say halacha will stay when Mashiach comes? Because, yeah, but it means because, halacha. Because it's really halacha. Dik, pure, 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 halacha it means halacha. It, it means halacha. But, what will, but the question is, what will it mean it when means the world is... That's halacha. Yeah, but, but it will mean something different in other words, what will keeping Shabbos mean when we're in the Hayyam Shekula Shabbos? That's what I'm asking you. Are you, you don't, well, the answer is I don't know oh. because I'm not How there. Yet. <laughs> Nobody's there yet. Not, not that they're distinguishing good and evil, it won't exist either. But is that good and evil was created Okay, by there the won't be good and evil, but there will be, relatively speaking, the lower state will be a darkness compared to the higher state. Okay. And that's so why going to have... continues because halacha is really halicha right, and going the to... continuation halicha... of the Hashem. And that's why you also mentioned rectification to purify the vessel. So we can halicha is, is a state. Halacha, I'll take her halicha el halacha. Don't read halacha. Going, read halacha because it's God's will expressed how things should move, move, how things should go. And I can't answer, I don't think anyone. If, if I may, may, may I, I add too. something here? You could, but let me just finish saying. Sure. If you find someone who can tell us what it would mean to behaving, to use the, all the halakhas of Shabbos, and maybe Eliza will tell us now. Go ahead. So if you look at the word halech, halech, we have within it lech, right? Yes. So lech is lamed and dechaf. Lamed is 30, chaf is 20. 30 and 20, you have 50. There, there's a reason that Haman was hung 50 cubits high, that that's what he built. We were at the almost 50th Madriga of Tuma when we were taken out. By Harsina, we were brought up almost to the 50th Madriga of Tahara. But we don't have the ability yet. We need, as, as you're saying, whether it's Eliyahu Hanavi, whether it's having the Avos back to teach us how we're going to go in order to go back to that Madriga of absolute Tahara, which we need the base of Mikdash. We need everything. But in terms of having the kalim to hold the light, the, the irony is that here we had a base of Mikdash. We had the physical place through which we could meet Hashem, so to speak. But it's only Purim, Chutz La'aretz, just as Har Sinai was given Chutz La'aretz, we have to know that nothing is contingent upon the, the, the physical place, 
but that we have to create a spiritual place and it's not the physical body, but it's creating that spiritual vessel to contain the light that is too great right now to our to be in our physical body. We have to be on that high madrego. And, and we'll get there by going lech in the way, the halachos. So, does that make sense? That's that's perfect perfect sense. What you said about the 50 so animals. let's go. And that's the reason I want to run that. But what you just said is, is a good preface to this sentence. That's the reason. That, that the holiday of Purim will never pass away from the Yehudim, right? Remember in the, that, uh, that Mordechai in the, in the story is called Ish Yehudi, even though he's not from the tribe of Yehuda. He's from the tribe of Benyamin. Because this idea of Yehuda, Yehuda is given over this, Moida, Moida above reason. So these days, in other words, to go Adela Yoda is, in, is an infinite progression. And therefore, Lo Yavro, it will never ever disappear. Uh, I'm sorry, there remains, there remains a trace. is a signet ring. So the idea is, is, as I said before, there's always, there's always a level before which proceeds and the, a trace of that remains. And that is something that you next need to get beyond. Here's an expression from the Gemara. All the festivals will become nullified. Now, it doesn't mean we won't celebrate them. It means that whatever they're designed for now, Will we be on that? They will. They we will reach new levels. If you should call amoydim, heimi bechinus oyder should be kelim. All the festivals are lights in vessels. Like you take uh, the the sukkah, for instance. The the skach in the sukkah is indicative of the transcendent lights, the call or makif, and they're in the vessel, which is the it brought down through the lulav and the esri. Al pi seder histalshul. So they're all indicative of the organizational structure of the universes, which is called the chain or the order of chaining out from the highest levels of Hatzilus to the lowest levels. But when there is an open revelation of the light higher than Hatzilus, higher than emanation, what we called earlier in this class, the, the or ein sof, the, the or which comes from essence, the kalim can't take it and they will become bottle. Now, bottle here doesn't mean broken. They'll become open. They'll become, as it says, we said that that in that, uh, that that it's tzaddik. He's a vessel with no interference. Everything just flows through him. These days, the Purim which we have, Shehem Yemei Mishtu Vesimcha, which are days of of festival of eating and drinking. Bahem Niagi Haor Bekeli Gam Bebichinus Oise Haor Shelifne Kolus Talsus. What was actually happening here? And we can only take his word for it and meditate on his word for it. Is what's happening here is that in our eating and drinking, with which we fulfill the mitzvah of Adela Yada, we're doing it with a consciousness of Adela Yada. So, what happens is the light of the infinite is coming, reaching into the Yagiha or the light reaches into the vessel. vessel. And one light is being revealed here. It's coming into the vessel, the light which is deeper than the Seder Histalshulis, the light which is Adalayada, where there's no distinctions whatsoever. Canal, uh, uh, as we said, the reason above. Therefore, they will never ever go away because no matter how high you get, there's always higher to get. No matter how deep you go, there's always deeper to go because God is Ain Sof, no end and no beginning. And that's what Purim is emblematic of. You did it. Um, <laughs> will those vessels cease to exist, Rabbi? No. The vessels will always... Lights and vessels is the whole, the whole name of the game, but the vessels will be so rarefied, so refined. But they'll receive all the light eventually. Yeah, as process, I said, similar to, of similar to the way it was before the Het, where even though Adam and Chava were in skin and body, are and the body sense. didn't interfere. But what about before Abba and Hallam were created? What about that? Are we going to go back <laughs> to that? Are we going to go back into the process no. of that? 
Can I give you a l'chaim before yeah, we go? Yeah. Anybody make... else? That's why the wine is here. I made the book once, I have to make it again. Right? Yeah. Oh. I'll take it twice. You didn't? No, I made it book. Okay. You can be your own shit. Uh, guys over there, Ari, you're making Lachayim. Where's Mitch? Mitch. Want to say Lachayim? You got an empty cup? Put something in it. I have a full cup. I've got my water. Amen. Amen. So can I can I can I can I say that we're making a time for Liora? You could say anything. Liora was a newly converted Jew. Um, she's a, a babe, a wow. young babe. <laughs> Wonderful. Just, just from today. Welcome and, to the uh, family. <laughs> And your soul must be connected because this is where she ended up on her right. first day as a Jew. Beautiful. Mitch, I'm going to go offline. Welcome, sister. Wait, before you go offline, welcome, sister. Welcome, sister. Thank you. Welcome, sis. <laughs> Louise, are we ever going to see you again in Goof Gashmi? I don't know. You don't know. As Rosh Hashem, but not just yet. Okay. okay. I'm Purim Sameach, everybody. Of course, of course. 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 Of course.